Welcome everybody to the Paddle and Fin Network. Tonight on the final cast, we have Sam Jones, our very own Sam Jones, and we're going to talk about TRC covers on the final cast. With me as usual is Brad Hicks. Brad, how's Hi. it going, buddy? Doing well, man. What awesome. about you? I'm doing great, man. <clears throat> Sweet. Sam, how you doing tonight? Man, I'm pumped up. I finally got off the reel down, feeling good, you know, <laughs> moving up in the world. <laughs> hey, yeah, you are. Hey, ahead, you know, uh, Skype reminded me that me and you haven't talked on Skype for three months. Dude, that's that's sad, dude. I know. That, I was that like, doesn't seem right. I was like, this weird. It doesn't seem like that long. but No, it doesn't seem like it's been that long since uh, you departed and Dan came on board, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, I think um, miss you on the show and love having Dan on the show. I think it was a uh, a win win though. You know, you guys are doing some really awesome stuff over here on the final cast. I got to say, it's probably my favorite segment um, on our show, except for I really like the OG show. That's still probably my favorite. But um, Dang it. you I was guys be like in your face, Brian. You, you're you're <laughs> moving up. You're moving up though. So I mean, they're all great though. Everyone's stepping it up. Um, so I think it was a, a great addition. You over here with Josh, um, you guys have a pretty good chemistry and then, uh, you know, Dan's, uh, a tournament guy as well. So he's really into the, you know, looking into the numbers and I call him detective Dan cause he's so great <laughs> at going out and finding all like the little intricate details of the clubs and the trails. So it's going to be fun to see that throughout the season, um, as we, you know, continue to build these shows out, but, yeah, man. Uh, excited to be over here on the final cast. I've been on the OG show as a guest uh, before I was a host, and uh, I've been stuck on the reel down ever since. So here we you are. Did, you did an episode, though, with Ryan, didn't you? On no. Passion. No, you yeah. never did. Nope. Haven't been on Ryan's show. Uh, would love to go on there at some point. Talk about uh, shaky any, heads. Yeah, shaky heads <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, dude. That'd be a good one. I need to learn yeah. the shaky head. Well, I, I would totally do it, too. So working on a little blog right now. I'm going to be uh, talking about um, different baits that people don't normally fish on a shaky head and talking about why they should consider doing so. Um, so I love throwing the shaky head. I'd, I'd absolutely talk about that. Talk about swim bait fishing, night fishing, all of it, anything. Sweet. Yeah, that, that's one of my goals this year, to learn the, learn the shaky head. So I'm gonna, I've caught fish on it before, but I, I really want to get more in depth with it. So that's going to be fun. Yeah. I think one of the big keys to that bait is finding a good one. That's a, that's, that's a bait that a lot of people are, you know, they're making terminal tackle for it. But I'm just going to throw it out there, man. The stuff that you've put out there, Sam, in regards to some of the stuff that they have, uh, especially with the biz baits, trick worms, and they, they look awesome in water, man. Yeah, biz baits got some great stuff. So what kind of separates biz baits from other companies? Um, cause I mean, there's, there's a lot of great plastic companies out there, but biz baits, their baits, not only are they super buoyant, but they're also scented and salted, which is kind of something that you don't really see. That's a difficult thing to achieve to have a buoyant bait. That's got a lot of scent and that has some salt, um, in it. So oh, strike King does that, don't they? Yeah. Um, you, like I said, so it's you, not, you're in good company. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think so. But, um, th you know, their baits are unique. Uh, that's one thing, you know, Brian, um, the owner of Biz baits, he doesn't go out and just copy things just because they're hot and they're trendy. He tries to come out with something that he feels is going to, you know, be different. Um, and so he's done a really great job of that so far. Uh, and as you were talking about, you know, the best shaky head worm I think you can ever throw. And it's really a great job shot worm as well is that dizzy diamond that's got yeah. that little diamond tail a little paddle tail on the back um and it just it stands up perfectly on the right head and it just has a really super natural movement that is just begging to get get smashed you know so <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I bought some of those z-man finesse uh worms to try yeah yeah z-man makes great product um you can't you can't go wrong with z-man either uh especially some of the stuff they have in that in the swim bait category just phew, awesome we all know it's awesome on a jackhammer or project z chatterbait but they also work great 
on underspins and jig heads. So um, definitely good stuff. Awesome, man. So we are going to talk about um, what happens to be one of our show sponsors, which is TRC Covers. Um, yeah. I know Brad's had some uh, experience using other covers. I have not, um, but oh. I have. Yeah, you have. What? Jigmasters. Yeah, those are TRC covers. Oh, are they? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's that was my first uh, go around with them. So when I ordered uh, my first shipment from TRC, I ended up picking up I think four or five of the uh, Jigmasters TRC covers, man, and I love them. And when I found out that you know Sam was uh, trying to get them on board with us, I got real excited because I was like, man, yeah, that's gonna be cool having some paddle and fin version. So, oh, yeah. um, but. Uh, Sam, why don't you go ahead and tell us uh, what you do for TRC covers right now? What's your uh, title over there? Yeah, so currently I am uh, what they consider social media and marketing manager uh, for TRC covers. So I handle all the web stuff, all the social media, all the marketing, advertising, um, work with our pro staff and our pros to, uh, to you know create content and that sort of thing. So. So that's what you're I You're the guy that sees everybody's pictures when we're tagging you. That's right. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's that is 90% of my day is uh, going through and combing through uh, content from all the different uh, companies that I work with uh, and their followers to try and find content for them. So, and creating it on my own. That's cool. Do you so say? Do you have to go and investigate? Like say, like today, uh, we created. I created a, a post. Um, highlighting TRC covers and so when you get like a do you get like a notification and then you go check it out kind of make sure it's up to standards yeah I mean I'm always I'm always combing and looking anytime TRC is tagged to see you know how the brand's being represented I, I'm definitely not I wouldn't say I'm policing people by any means I'm not messaging people and saying hey oh you you mentioned that wrong or you said that wrong or anything like that mostly what I'm doing is I'm looking for content to share um, and 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 to use, so that we can kind of give back to the people who are sharing stuff about us um, by sharing their stuff on our profile and, and exposing it to our following. And then, of course, we always are looking for more content to build out our profiles. Um, so a lot of times, what I'll do though is I'll wait. Like I have files where I just kind of save links to things, so that. I, you know, I'll go back and share, share your post from today, maybe a week from now or a month from now or something like that and bring us some new life on our pages. See, I, I like companies that do that and like represent the anglers that represent them. It's, it's cool. Uh, Bending Branches does the same thing. I think that's yeah, cool. what it's all about. That's what it's all about. It's again, I mean, you'll, if you've listened to me long enough or read any, <laughs> followed me and read any of my posts, I'm always talking about community. So anything that I'm involved in, I'm trying to bring that into it because, I mean, if there's not that, then what is there? Right. Right. Yeah. It's unfortunate, though, because you do get some companies out there that will, like, hit up, like, a group and, like, you know, of, like, owners of, like, say, a certain boat or whatever, right? And they'll be like, hey, post your pe- pictures from the weekend you know and then everybody does and then they select like a few that they want to throw up on you know said instagram whatever company you know and then they don't they get your like information but they don't really kind of share it like in a sense they'll tag you in a sense but like you know they don't kind of highlight like they just yeah. kind of simply tag it and sometimes i kind of think they fall short a little bit and it's cool because the scene where trc is real good about making sure that they're kind of not like a f- like full on feature, but you know they're getting their information out there for the anglers, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, thanks. I I mean I try to do a good job at it. I mean I think uh, there's always room for improvement there, um, but you know definitely trying to put our best foot forward on that. So yeah, sweet. Well, going into the covers, so like I had previously mentioned, I got four or five of them through Jigmasters. And it was the first time I ever bought any rod covers and instantly, instantly putting them on. I was at first kind of, 
a little weary because I had, I'd been with Brad before and I'd watch how Brad str- str- struggled with his actually his uh, rod covers always slipping off. Like oh he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He would be so mad. It was hilarious. Like we'd be at the <laughs> river, and he's trying to get them out of his boat, and they're just falling inside of his boat, moving all the way to the back or in the middle. And, right. Um, and I was a little weary about that with the TRC covers at first. I know they make a version that has like a bungee in a sense, mm-hmm. a hook. But to be honest with you, man, like without that, they stay pretty solid in place. Also, you do not need that bungee. Yeah, so with with TRC covers, like you said, there is a there is an option to add it. In fact, I've I've got one right here. So they put a little ring in there, and then you got your bungee, like you've seen on others. This is actually a really nice bungee, um, and they don't uh, they don't dry rot or tear up too easily. But what what makes them so unique is the tip protection um, at the top. So, um, in addition to using a rubber compound and putting a, um, a nice cap on the top so that your rod tips don't bust out, there is a foam insert in there and your rod tip slides into that foam insert. And that does a couple different things. So one, it protects that when you're, you know, putting it in the car or the truck in the bed, in the rod locker, inside the kayak, and it's because that's the that's the piece that gets the brunt of the force, right? When we're we're jamming them in these different places, so it protects that rod tip, and then it also helps hold the rod cover on the rod uh, yeah. because it, it puts a little just enough tension there to keep that on there, so that you don't have to worry about it. Uh, let's see, I don't know if I can get it on camera or not. I don't have a lot of space here, but we'll see. I'll try. So here we go. So you actually have to apply some pressure in order for that to come off. And then it just slides right back in there. um, And you can see it doesn't pop off until you put enough force on it. Uh, So, yeah, that holds it on and keeps it on there, which is really nice. Um, you know, we're talking about kayak fishing here, but it's also really great for guys who are fishing in the back of the boat, co-anglers or jumping in a boat with their buddy. Um, back when I was doing a co-angler thing, cause I've been with TRC covers for a long time. Um, when I was doing a co-angler thing, man, I could leave all those covers on my rods. Uh, wouldn't have to worry about them blowing off. If they did blow off, the cool thing is the third part on that foam tip insert is it keeps the rod cover from sinking. They float. So if it did blow off, I could get it, but they rarely ever did. And if they did, it's just because I didn't put them on all the way. Um, but it, so it just kept everything really organized. So instead of having, you see guys all the time in the back of the boat, they've got like six or seven, maybe eight rods and they get all tangled up or they're twisting their line around their rods to keep them from uh, tangling up with the rod covers on there. You just simply just pull it off and put it back on and then grab the other rod. It's super easy to manage. Um, same thing in the kayak, you know, when you're transporting and traveling. Well, heck those, uh, rod socks are actually good for people who fish off the banks and, uh, wade fish as well, because like if you're bushwhacking and stuff, I, I used to bushwhack like crazy and my yep. lines would get caught in twigs and anything or everything like that. It, that doesn't happen with, with a rod sock on. Yeah. So it's funny. You're exactly right. And some people will ask me when they see me out on the water why I still have my covers on. Um, because generally in practice and sometimes even on tournament day, if I really have it dialed in, I'll leave my covers on my rods mm-hmm. if I'm fishing shallow or if yep. I think there's a chance that I'm going to run in on the bank or get pushed into brush or anything like that. Um, because it's just a little added protection for my rod. It keeps things a little less, uh, Mm -hmm. they don't get tangled up in, you know, leaves and, and, uh, limbs and low hanging trees, but that that always makes me cringe, man. (laughs) Yep. Yep. But there's something that people don't ever think about really when it comes to rod covers, it also protects your line. Yeah. And, You know, like that's one thing I tell people all the time. Like some people will say, well, you know, if the rod breaks or a guide breaks, I'll get it replaced. Okay, cool. But you can't replace that six pounder that breaks you off. 
because mm-hmm. you jammed all your rods into your car or your rod locker and nicked your lineup. You know right, what I'm right. saying? So Never that's one thing. That. That, yeah, most people don't think about that, but I'm just super anal when it comes to all those things. Um, you know, retying and protecting my line. So that's just one thing that I found um, or I thought about one day, and it's kind of stuck with me ever since. Yeah. Hey, Brad, do you want to kind of talk about like your comparison from the ones that you were using before to your TRC covers now? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't remember the brand that I had, but I bought, I purchased them at field and stream and they're right there, right in the middle of all the, all the rod section, but hated those things. Cause everybody, <laughs> Josh is already laughing. Cause he's picturing me like yelling Just at him. Yell. Like I've never <laughs> seen somebody yell at an inanimate object the way he was, <laughs> but man, I would, st- so I'm in a bonafide 120 SS 127. So I would store, all four or five of my rods inside the hole. So when I take out each one individually, the rod would slide out of the rod sock and the rod sock stays back in the very back of the freaking hole. So then I would have to walk all the way around, lift up the rear end of my kayak, just to make them slide back to the front. And it drove me nuts. Yep. They didn't have, they didn't have that little insert where you, you stick your rod in there and you can feel it click like a TRC cover. Yeah. It didn't have those. It was just, like that rubber plastic stuff you were talking about on the tip mm-hmm. of it. So yeah, no, no, nobody has that. That's uh, that's proprietary to TRC. Nobody else has that. Um, I've never seen anything like it out there anyway. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, and then the rubber compound they use is a little bit unique too. Uh, they cover more of the tip section with that than most do. Uh, and it's a little bit different. Uh, so it doesn't break down. It doesn't melt. It doesn't. Uh, like some people have tried it to duplicate it and like their dye will um, kind of rub off onto the line and onto mm-hmm. lures and into reels and stuff like that, or, or it'll break down over time. So that's kind of unique. And it's not just on the outside, it's on the inside too. So when you talk about the base of the rod cover, right, we're talking about the tip right now, but when you talk about the base of the rod cover, um, it's got the, the coating on the inside as well, which keeps mm-hmm. it from catching on your guides and stuff like that when you're taking it up and down the rod. Um, and also keeps from your hooks getting stuck in there and stuff. So it's pretty cool. That was another thing I was going to hit on my old rod socks. I did have, they didn't have that rubber coating on the bottom side and yeah. the, the way they did it, they folded like two inches up into the rod sock. Mm-hmm. So when you slid it down and it like so, some rods are longer than, or shorter than others. So, the rod sock would go over the bait a little bit. It'd get caught in the hooks and got yep. caught in the eyelets. It, it drove me nuts. Yeah, that's typically what you see is just them taking the material, the mesh material, and folding it over. Yeah, that's that's not a good, not a good design at all. I hate it. So TRC did a good job with that. That's yeah, another they did. big big thing I like about it. One yeah, thing. I, oh, go ahead and Sam. I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, it didn't, it didn't start that way, right? That's years of mm-hmm. product perfection. Um, man, I don't have the picture, but maybe when this airs, I'll give you guys the picture. I've got the, not the original, original, but like one of the first prototypes um, next to what we have today. And you can really see where it's, uh, where it's come, the evolution of it. It's pretty cool. So I remember running into TRC at the Columbus fishing expo, like three years ago, maybe probably two, last year. Ago? No, it wasn't last year. Oh, it, okay. was, it was a f- two or three years ago, but I, I want to say the designs were a, a little bit different than they were now. And I, I was looking at them then and I, I just waited for some reason, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. one of the biggest updates I think that we've seen is to the rod tip itself, that rod tip section, kind of we reinforced that because even with the coating um, in one of the earlier designs, even with that rubber coating and that tip, um, over time, a rod tip still could kind of work through that material and bust out eventually. Um, it was rare, but it did happen. So, you know, I think as the, the product progressed um now you've got that hard tip that they put on top it's actually so i mean it's not you're not popping a rod tip through it's not going to happen yeah yeah that'd be crazy (laughs) yeah i 
Uh, there was oh the the other the one last thing I was going to mention about my old rod socks before I got TRC covers was the the actual uh, material of the mesh. Like I get I guess how it was woven wasn't as tight as a weave as TRC covers. Yeah, so that you're spot on. Other uh, this other brand would uh, poke out uh, or my my guides would poke out of the weaves and it would get caught trying to pull it out and everything and make it a little bit more pain. Yeah, sort of defer, like defeats the whole purpose of even having a rod sock protection at that point when all your stuff is hanging out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I guess that's what I get for paying like five, six bucks. But Well, you're spot on because that's another thing that doesn't get talked about very often. But the material that they use, um, and I don't have all the technical, if it's 8 hex or 10 hex or 12 hex, I probably should know that, but I don't. But what I do know is that it is a uh, much tighter woven material and it's cylindrical. Mm -hmm. So a lot of companies use a flat material um, to do it. And this is a, a cylindrical material. Um, it actually has a really, really tight weave. And it's not to say that with enough pressure, you can't pop a guide through there. But it, I, I, mean, I haven't it, done it yet. It's, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. Uh, it's really difficult to do. Um, when I work shows, it's one of my favorite things to show people. I'll actually take a finger on each side of the guide. Uh, you wouldn't be able to see it on the camera. I do it right now. And I press in on it. Um, and you can tell that it, it's actually protecting that guide versus then I'll take just any other random cover that we get at the show. Cause we'll go around and collect a couple different covers and push on it. And immediately it just pops right through, hmm. uh, especially those micro guides, man. It's so hard to protect those micro guides. Um, but our covers do it. That's awesome. So one of the other things, since we're talking about the the actual material, um, and I've I've heard about this. I think I read about it somewhere, and I've also kind of witnessed it on my own. Uh, Brad and I are big river uh, river fishermen. We like smallmouth bass, right? We always mention this, but um, like I've kept them on my rods and a lot of times we start getting up in the trees and that stuff is uh, woven so tight and it's it's got you know almost like it's got a coating to itself right the whole mm -hmm. the whole length of that does so it yeah. actually is really good for not snagging into trees i mean you'll still catch them a little bit here and there but it it the uh, branches um thorns thorns don't really stick to it real well right i mean i've 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 come out sometimes with like one or two stuck in there but um that's one thing that's really i've really liked about it was that and you know it doesn't really yank on them you know you would think maybe if you hooked into something thorny or whatever it's going to want to kind of jerk the uh rod cover off or take your um you know your rod with it it, it helps deflect a lot of that stuff too yep absolutely right and that's why it has that glossy sheen on it if you see them up close again in, in the camera, it's going to be hard to probably see it, but they're super glossy. Uh, and that's cause they do have, you know, they are coated, um, like that to, to prevent those things. Keep, keep from getting too saturated with water on a rainy day, those sort of things. Yeah, dude, they're, they're nice. And I mean, to be honest with you, they're not overpriced, you know, no. like for being like probably the best cover that's out there. Um, and, you know they're they're priced really 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 nicely because i i was expecting them to be a lot more um when i first kind of heard about them and read up about them and then i started shopping around and then i found that jig masters was carrying them also so um what do you what is say like your standard one without the bungee what's that retailing for now like a custom spinning cover you're looking at like 13 bucks standard custom spinning or um bait cast cover you're looking at like nine bucks um we have different specialty covers and again straps and stuff like that we actually do offer what we call a simple cover um i don't know if i have one of those laying around yeah i do like so if you don't care for like the big beefy um coated tip at the end you can get just a rim Mm -hmm. uh, still keeps it from catching on guides and stuff like that. So you can get simple covers if you want those. Um, but yeah, you can fully customize them, but yeah, I like nine bucks for casting. Um, and then, or eight fifty for the standard, uh, casting stuff. So 
Yeah, really reasonable, especially when <laughs> they're American made, man. Veteran owned yeah. company, American made, like they're made in Texas, literally from start to finish. Um, you know, most coverages you're seeing out there are bought from China or the materials from China and, you know, guys throwing it together. But um, yeah, American made, veteran owned, they, they employ um, other, other veterans and you can't beat that. Heck yeah. Um, I kind of want to go back to the, 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 uh, uh, foam insert you were talking about. Cause sure. Like you want to, you want to cut one open and see what happens. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna joke about that, but I don't know if you're actually going to do it or not. <laughs> oh, for sure. Let's do it. Let's Are do you it. serious? He's probably yeah. got 50 of them sitting next to him. <laughs> no, I, I actually I am curious. Bro, I've got, like. I've got rod covers from TRC from the beginning, dude, that are still like good to go. Like they're, oh, wow. I don't, I don't take them out anymore. You know, they're on old rods that are hanging up in the rod rack, but yeah, we can cut one open. Sweet. Cause yeah, I was wondering about that foam insert. It kind of feels like it's plastic when I squeeze it at the top, you know, it feels like a plastic. That's the, yeah. That's the rub. That's the rubber around it, but. Okay, yeah, I, I guess I do need to see it just to get an idea, cause I, I thought I heard somebody say that there was a foam insert at the top, but it just feels yeah. like I, I don't feel it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so let's see this. <laughs> I've actually not done this in a really long time. <laughs> I'll see. I've right. actually done it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah for okay. sure. Okay. So there you, you might go. Have to put that closer to the camera. I can't see it. All right. So that's whole, right? Yeah. Open that thing up like that. Uh huh. Oh, okay. I was thinking like a cylinder, uh, uh, you know, like a. Uh, it's glued in there. Cylinder. Real tube, tight. It's like cemented in there. So I can't pull the actual insert out for you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, on this one. But yeah, it's just a, just a foam insert in there. And that little piece of foam that protects that rod tip, plus you got all this rubber up here and this folded over material um, that when it, I mean, you can see there's no give to that, right? Mm -hmm. When I bang that against my hand, yeah, there's no give to that. With a normal rod cover, that would be folding over on itself. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Your rod tip would be taking all that impact. So... Uh, but that little foam piece of insert keeps that floating and protects your rod tip. I gotcha. Yeah, I didn't know it like coated the outside of the inside of it. Yeah. I thought it was like a actual foam like cylinder, you know, that that was up at the top that so like absorbed, you know, con you know, I don't know, impact, I guess. Yeah. Well, basically what they're doing is they're just taking a rounded foam yeah. uh, material. They're they're using some type of uh, adhesive, um, putting it into the mesh, and then putting dipping it into the special compound that they use. That would that would dip down into mm -hmm. you know whatever they use. I, I haven't actually been to the warehouse. It's something I want to do this year is go to the manufacturing area. But um, that would dip down in there and that would harden and dry. Mm, there you go. It's solid. Th thanks for ruining one of your covers for my no curiosity. Problem. No problem. <laughs> that, that was actually interesting because that's something I've thought about before. Dude, there are entire YouTube channels dedicated to tearing stuff apart. So, <laughs> hey, what the heck? We'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're listening to this podcast, you might want to jump on uh, the Paddle and Finn YouTube channel and check that out. Because uh, otherwise, <laughs> you're like, what are they talking about? <laughs> hey, I, I, I might even do a little review video on these, you know? I, We'll see. For sure. That'd be awesome, man. I'll send you one and cut up. All right. Sounds good. I just thought it'd be interesting. Mm. <laughs> All right. right. It's like, so I uh, was cutting one of those and cut my pinky off. <laughs> <laughs> and then I hold it up to the camera like it's like this in half good. of a finger. This is gone. <laughs> good Sweet. stuff, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Josh. <laughs> Um, so is there a huge difference with that bungee? The bungee has, it, it has a, a purpose for sure. Um, 
I, I'll be honest with you. Out of the no, not a single one of the rods. So I usually carry uh, ten to fifteen rods with me when I go out on the water. I'll have anywhere from seven to ten on the boat, and then the others are in the hall. Um, I don't think a single one has a bungee on it, to be honest with you. Hmm. May oh nope, I take that back. Uh, my spinning rod, one of my spin, both my spinning rods do. I do use it on those spinning rods. I don't know why. I just happen to have them, I guess. Hmm. So uh, what does that bungee hook onto? Uh, it just wraps around your reel. Okay. Like the actual handle on the reel? Yeah, you can do it a couple different ways, right? Look, I don't oh. even have it. <laughs> I don't even have it on the reel. <laughs> so, That's you awesome. know, you put, the, you put the rod cover on there, and then you uh, you just take that bungee, and you can wrap it all the way around like that, or you can just put it on the the reel handle. So, you know – Go ahead. That that right there, when we received ours, I, I was curious if it was going to have the bungee because of my problem I told you before. I found out they didn't have bungees. I was like, crap. Yeah, he was disappointed. <laughs> yeah, well, then I put the rod sock on and I felt it click in. And then, you know, I tried to mess with it. I'm like, I don't need the bungee. Yeah, so I was, right. I was happy. Yeah. Where, where that probably is more beneficial is when you are wanting to be very, very quick about it. And like, you don't want to, it doesn't take much to get that rod tip in there, but sometimes because of the way that foam insert is, you kind of, kind of help it on. So if you just want to be like really quick and just jam it on, or, um, if you need, when you're going like 70, 80, 90 miles an hour down the, the boat, down the water in a boat, you know, you have a better odds of that kind of flying off. Or if you've got them in a truck bed where they're kind of like angled up on the short bed, you know what I'm saying? Maybe then it's a little more beneficial. It's just that little extra cushion. You know, they do float. So if it comes off, you know, it's going to float. You can go back and get it. But if a guy doesn't want to have to deal with going back and getting it, he just wants that extra security. There's that. I mean, it, it, but it, is it absolutely necessary? No, we don't. Honestly, we don't sell a ton of them with it because of what you just said. You know, guys get get their excuse me, get their hands on ones without, and they realize they don't really need them. So, yeah. but I will say, as we were talking about that, something that kind of came to mind. Um, these are fully customizable, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, we got the paddle and fin ones. We do it for a lot of different rod manufacturers. Um, and different brands out there, uh, Jig Masters, you guys mentioned that. So there, there are a lot of brands out there. They're fully customizable. You can put any label you want on there. Standard ones come with a TRC covers label on there and then the standard sizes. But you can, you can change that up. You can put it jig rod. You can put spinnerbait rod. You can put uh, seven foot. You can order them by a particular length rather than using the standard sizes. Um, and then you can also, like say you're throwing a crankbait rod, right? If you don't want that rod cover to come super far down because you don't want to have to deal with like the bigger baits, like a big swim bait or a crankbait or whatever like that, you can order it a little bit shorter mm-hmm. so that more of that butt section of the uh, main blank above the reel is, is open to hold that big crankbait, you know, like a, like a 10 XD or something. Um, so that's cool. And then if you want it to come all the way down to the reel, you can order it a little bit long. Yeah. I, I have one that's a little bit long, but it, it's fine because it's my jig rod. So, I mean, it, it goes over the weed guard a little bit, but it's not, not too much towards a problem. I actually like, so if it's not a treble hooked bait, I actually like my uh, rod cover to go over my lure for the same reason I was talking about earlier. It protects my line. It protects my knot and it protects my bait and it protects your seats and it protects your seats for (laughs) sure. And like, (laughs) Oh, I've got little ones, right? So, you know, most of the time my rods are put up in a place where my kids can never get to them. Um, but there's sometimes that they're hanging out, you know, when I come in real quick, if they were to come out here and get, get into those that'd be a bad deal so it kind of protects from little ones animals you know a lot of people talk about that it protects from the cats and stuff like that but anything that doesn't cover with the rod cover um i use one of the trc lower covers and wrap that around it yeah Let, let's get back to the customization stuff uh, are you able to 
put whatever you want on there. Yeah. Really. So, I mean, we have some limitations, right? Like we've only got so much space to work with. So basically um, any wording that you want, and I don't remember the exact character limit, um, but any wording that you want on there, logo wise, um, we, we can do most logos unless they're super intricate or a lot of little details or they have to be, you know, really large. Um, otherwise we can pretty much scale all those down and get them on there. And if we can't, we work with you to, uh, customize something for you. So like paddle and fin, right? The circle logo, um, there, that would be really hard to get that onto that little space where it's, where it's, you know, readable, um, mm -hmm. and you can make out what it is. So in that case, and, and for, uh, people that are viewing this on YouTube, you're seeing the pictures kind of scroll across the screen here. Uh, we took all the lettering out and kind of made like a block format, um, but used all the same design features so that it's still, you know, got that brand recognition that you're looking for. And does that, are, are you able to pick whatever font you want or is it like one standard font? Yeah. So basically what we do is we have you send a PNG or vector file of your logo mm -hmm. and we recreate based off of that. So, okay. Most of the time, if you have a logo made, you know what font you used. Yeah. And we can uh, we can grab that font and and recreate if we need to recreate. Sweet. Now, can you get it in like different colors, the actual lettering and the print? Yeah. So we've got all kinds of different colors of mesh material and dye dip, um, and then we uh, the logos uh, that go on the covers are made out of a vinyl material, so different types of vinyl. Uh, for those and we can get you know pretty much anything that we need uh, we have st standard stuff in stock but if we're doing you know bulk orders for people uh, and they want a spe specific color we can we can grab vinyl for that cool. what what's the uh, uh what, what's the uh, price for that upgrade for uh customization so surprising enough uh it's pretty much nothing so when you when you do a custom cover we charge you a one-time fee that's it to set that up. It's, it's like 30 bucks for a, uh, a logo on there and it's one time. So, so, so somebody can, can go back and then like reorder, like yep. it saves it on this website or something. Yep. That's cool. So we, yeah, it's just, all that is, is just to cover that initial, um, that initial time that we have in putting, putting that together. And, and honestly, it's just, it's 30 bucks is nothing to get a custom logo. So hmm. sweet. Didn't know and that. you guys, and you guys hold on to those files and everything, right? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Cause you know, you might order 50 rod covers, you know, and then you don't need another set for a year, maybe two. Um, yeah. and that's for rod builders. And honestly, <laughs> There, you guys can unless they get a new rod or they want to go all one collar or they want to just change it up a little bit once you buy it you put it on a rod a seven foot rod it's going to last you. i've got covers that man i can't even tell you how many years old they are yeah so hmm. it's not like something you got to keep rebuying because again they float you drop it in the water you retrieve it and they last a lifetime yeah, yeah that, that coating you can tell that that stuff's going to last. It's durable. It's going to last a long time also. Yep. Yep. So, and the old <laughs> ones I have are before all the improvements. So, you know, now it's like I, my, my children will be using them. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> like, daddy, look, I still have your TRC cover. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I'm putting my daughter's it on your got crane. like pink, pink and purple ones. <laughs> I'm going to put it on your cane, daddy. Yes. Hey, you, you're you're going to, you're going to pull one out when you're a grandpa and uh, your grand, grandson or granddaughter is going to be like, hey, what what was Paddle and Finn? It's going to bring back all these memories. Yep, there you like, go. I remember this one time. I was on these sh I was on this dumb show with Josh and Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Good times. Good times. So anything else you want to add? Oh, yeah, I wanted to add this. So mm -hmm. I remember – jumping on trc's website and i saw that you guys work with angler and do like a bundle pack like uh it's like yeah a, you want to talk about that 
Absolutely. So uh, it's actually scrolled across the cre- screen a couple times for uh, people watching this on YouTube later. Uh, Angler Bundle Pack, that was actually created uh, almost a year ago. Actually, we were back at the Bassmaster Classic last year. It was the first classic TRC had been to. Angler was at that time really coming on strong with their with their branding and their presence in the industry. Um, and we met with them a couple times at the Classic and, and talked about doing kind of this combo deal. Uh, which we which we have available now and it's really geared towards a kayak angler though anyone can use it the original concept was geared around kayak fishing uh, because that's what we were all talking about that was kind of like the big buzz uh, last year for obvious reasons Um, so what's included in that is two um, covers so it's a spinning cover and a bait cast cover and then also one of our newest products, which we don't even have available um, outside of the angler bundle just yet, it will be available on the site soon uh, to order, you know, by itself. But the angler bundle has a wire cover. Um, last year, again at the Bassmaster Classic, um, had this idea of this wire cover. Was talking to Chad and, and Fluke Master about it. Um, and we went over to the Bonafide Kayaks booth and we were kind of playing with this concept and this idea of taking the TRC uh, cover, the standard bait cast cover, and putting the open in on both ends. And I apologize, I don't have one here. Um, I gave the only ones I had away at the Turkey Bowl and I haven't gotten any in since. Um, but it basically, if you can picture it, it's got the, the base end the open end on each end. So you just run your wire loom or your wire bundle right through that. Um, so where your wires connect into the back of your, your fish finder. Oh yeah. All the way down to where they go into your box or your dry pod or however you have it connected uh, in the bass boat realm, right? Same thing. If you've got an external unit, it just kind of cleans up those water, uh, those wires. We're going to have them to where they're custom linked um, you can order them by custom length and we'll have two default links as well. Um, but so for example, I ha- I'm having one made right now that's three foot long and that's actually going to cover my trolling motor cables from the head of my trolling motor to, uh, to where they go into the, to the kayak hall. Um, so it just kind of cleans those things up, makes them a little less, um, obtrusive. I don't even know if that's a word. I may have just made a word up there. Um, but you know, just kind of cleans it up, gives a little style, you know, uh, guys in their kayak are like, uh, women in jewelry. We like to accessorize. So, um, gives it a clean look. So that's included in there. So two, a, a bait cast cover, a spinning cover, the new wire cover, um, and then the angler bullseye, uh, is included in that as well. You can actually purchase that on our website. There's links to it on the angler website as well. Um, and that sells for $49.99, like super cheap. Uh, so that's a great deal for that. Um, and it comes with a seven foot casting and a seven foot spinning. So <laughs> that's that. Yeah. That, that wire cover reminds me of the uh, of a Chinese finger trap. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, that's a bet. Man, I wish I would have thought of that. That's a way better way to explain. <laughs> is that why you started what smiling? <laughs> it was because it was the first thing that popped in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're totally right. Other people have said that. And I always forget that reference and I should use that because it's a great way to describe it. Yeah. Uh, but it's a cool product. We've had a, a ton of people asking to order those in like independently of the angler bullseye. Um, so that's going to be coming any day, really. Um, that'll be updated on the website where you can order those. Again, there'll be uh, a, a standard size and a large size. And then you can also custom order by length and the, the charge will depend on the length of it. But yeah, if you actually, if you go to uh, Fluke Master's um, YouTube channel mm-hmm. uh, earlier in the summer when he did his rigging video on his last mm-hmm. kayak before he got his uh, his new one from his custom one, um, yeah. when he did his last rigging video, you can see the TRC um, Fluke Master branded wire cover and his uh, and his rod covers that we built for him. I knew I saw it somewhere. I, I've seen it recently. I was trying to think where. I think that's where I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only place that it is other than in the angler bullseye. Um, that's the only place that we currently have it. Yeah, it's cool. I've seen it. So. Hey, 
I think he used he used his from going to the back of the fish finder into the dry pod, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. That's how it he was had. about eight inches long, I think, too. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, that was cool. I like that. It was a cool look. Yeah, it's just just another little piece to customize it and protect those wires and keep them from getting tangled up into stuff. So, yep. yep. It's a good idea. Um, anything else on the TRC covers? Anything, Sam? Anything else you can think of? I mean, I think we covered a lot of it. Um, you know, obviously, give us a follow on Instagram at TRC Covers. Um, uh, on Facebook, give us a like there. Drop a comment or two. Tell us what you think about the product. Um, if you've tried the product in the past, you know, definitely give it another try. Uh, like I said, we've made some updates to it. So uh, they're even better than they were before. Um, and if you're interested in getting some covers uh feel free to hit me up and if you need some custom stuff for your company or your brand or heck if you just want to promote your own instagram or whatever uh let us know we can do that you can reach out to us on social media or hit us up uh on the website and then of course we got some uh pretty sweet paddle and fin ones available that uh people can uh, message us through the paddle and fin social media or hit up any of the host and we can get you some paddle and fin ones as well. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know there's been quite a bit of people that have asked about that. And I I think Brian's actually sent out quite a few too. Yeah, I know. I know probably three guys just in my area that have them now. So. That's awesome. Yeah, they're they're nice. They look good. Dad. I I, what's up? I got, I got one sitting back here somewhere. I think that was probably <laughs> one of my favorite products that i received last year awesome man I'm glad to hear that and not yeah. just saying that because it's a sponsor or anything i i truly feel that way because like i said where i came from before to the trc covers now it's huge difference and it's not that yeah, expensive yeah i don't think anybody can deny that they're they're you know top top notch cover mm-hmm. there's not anything else out there really like it I mean, that's the thing. It, it's kind of its own. We call, we don't even like it's TRC covers, but we consider it fishing rod protection because it's more than just like a simple cover. It actually protects your rod, which is funny because that's the whole point of the cover. But most are just a piece of material that do nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to share my favorite part of having these covers and what moment it was. So out of all the performance stuff, everything's awesome. But on my way back from Tennessee with Brad and them, I didn't put them back on, right? Mm. So I am driving about 20, 30 minutes into my drive and my rods are all stacked up inside the truck, you know, and up in the, on the bottom uh, passenger side floor in the front, kind of coming over, you know, at the angle we've all done. And I can't stand repetitive noises, like ticking noises. And my rods were starting to vibrate and yep. tap against each other. And I was, I mean, I was losing my mind. I pulled over <laughs> and specifically put all my rod covers back off and rode peacefully home in such bliss. It was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, and it's, it's amazing. I mean, that's, that's literally my favorite part about those covers is not hearing that noise. <laughs> hey, yeah. you, you know what else would have helped with that noise? What's that? storing those rods with the rod socks inside your hole in your kayak oh you can't you don't have a bonafide oh you, but how you need many a bonafide rod? man yeah, i do but you know what <laughs> what happens when you do that brad you that's break it. them <laughs> yeah. that's why brad breaks his rods <laughs> well that needs friends with justin and justin breaks them for him <laughs> <laughs> i was just getting over that too man you gotta bring that up again <laughs> not to get off subject here but josh what what do you what are you in i have a coos hd oh okay that's right i couldn't remember what you were in yeah those are nice boats yeah so the uh anything else uh trc sells other than covers hey, i don't know if we hit that or yet or not yeah, we've got uh, we've got lure covers. Obviously, there's uh, some apparel. We sell the Angler Bullseye by itself. Uh, a couple other little uh, interesting products. Um, we got a fish keeper. Um, so 
that's where we're at now. We're actually in the process of developing some new products. Those will be coming out um, throughout 2020. Uh, pretty cool. Sweet. Can't really ICAST. talk about anything just yet. Uh, we won't be at ICAST, but we, oh, will, okay. we will launch some stuff. Uh, it's going to be pretty cool. We're kind of starting to expand the uh, the product lineup, so we're excited about that. Uh, the wire covers uh, being one of those things, um, but uh, we got some other things in the works and a lot of ideas that uh, we're we're looking at. So uh, so yeah, check it out trccovers.com. Um, you can see everything that we have there, and uh, yeah, that's that's really it, man. Are you guys podcast. going to be at the KBF uh, National Championship Expo? Yeah, absolutely. So we got a pretty extensive uh, show lineup. In fact, we're going to be at uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. I don't know when this episode will air, but uh, we'll be there this weekend, um, first first or second weekend of January, whatever it is at this January point. January 10th? Yeah, January 10th. We'll be at Raleigh, North Carolina. We're going to be at the uh, Great American Outdoors show. Uh, we'll be at uh, we'll be back at the East Tennessee uh, show, but uh, we'll be at the Bassmaster Classic and uh, – first time we're going to be at the kayak bass fishing national championship this year so awesome. definitely pumped up about that man i hope to make it down there for that weekend just just to experience it for national championship yeah yeah absolutely man that it's going to be a good time um you know we'll all be going out after practice and stuff and uh, grabbing dinner and grabbing a drink or two and uh, the expo is going to be really cool. A lot of products, awesome products and people that will be there. So I would I would encourage, any, whether you're fishing or not, I definitely encourage everyone to go down. Bassmaster Classic too. Gosh, oh, man. You want to <laughs> talk about you want to talk about fun. You want to talk about getting exposure to brands and meeting a lot of people and networking. Best place to do it. If you want to take fishing seriously, you're looking for sponsors, you're looking to get involved in the community, the Classic is the place to go. Um, and this is the 50th year anniversary, so there's going to be some awesome parties. Last year, they uh, they launched the Vexus boat. Uh, we got to go to the Vexus boat launch party. That was that was so cool. I mean, that was a really great time. Um, so yeah, those are two events that Alabama's lucky to have. And if you're within driving distance, you should definitely put that on the schedule. Hmm. Anytime an expo is involved, man, I'm in. I love it. I love well, it. Well. What's great too about the Bassmaster Classic this year is Bass Nation is launching their kayak trail series, um, and the first event is in conjunction with the Bassmaster Classic. So you can basically go down and spend the week down there. So you can practice, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The tournament's on Thursday, and then you've got Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to experience the expo, experience the classic, go to the weigh-ins, and if you do good enough um, in the tournament. Apparently, you get to walk across uh, the classic stage. I mean, can can you get any better than that? That's like a childhood dream for almost every fisherman alive. So, um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Sweet. Yeah. This was a good episode, man. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks. for coming on, Sam. Yeah, yeah, anytime. Happy to happy to do it. Yeah, and everybody look forward. We're going to have Sam on again. We're going to talk about a couple of uh, the other companies he represents. Um, so look forward to having some more episodes with Mr. Sam Jones. So, Brad, you want to take us out, buddy? I guess if I have to. Well, before we do that, Sam, is there anything you want to drop as far as your Instagram where people can follow you? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Uh, I'd love for everyone <laughs> to give me a follow. I'm really easy to find on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, that's at jonesing two fish it's the number two not to number two jonesing two fish uh you type that in on facebook or instagram you're gonna find me hashtag as well as jonesing to fish another way to find me and then i'll be dropping a youtube channel any day which will also be jonesing to fish and that's going to be basically a vlog of my 2020 life on the tournament trail and tips and tricks and all this other crazy madness that i do Awesome, Very dude. Cool, man. Well, thanks again for coming on, uh, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll, you'll hear back from us next Thursday. And till then, uh, hope you guys have a good weekend and a good week next week. Have a good, have a good night. Good night. Deuces. See you guys. Go check out the website, guys. Paddle the letter N and fin .com. Also check out YouTube, youtube.com forward slash paddle and fin. 
you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We're doing giveaways, announcements, things like that at Facebook and Instagram at paddle and fin. Shout out to our show supporters, Rocktown Adventures, Leveling Canoe and Kayak, Hammered Lures, Fish Mob Lures, TRC Covers, Catch Products. Go to catchproducts.com. You can put the Paddle and Fin logo right on your catch board. Don't forget to go over and pick up your Jig Masters jigs. Use promo code PNF20 and save 20% today. Don't forget to rate and review the podcast on whatever platform you're listening to. It helps grow the audience, helps others find our podcast. So please drop a five-star rating in on the podcast platform you're listening on. Don't forget about the Recycled Plastics program, you guys. Take your used plastic baits, put them in an envelope, mail them to the address in the show notes. Our man Eric Richards at Hammered Lures melts those down, makes new baits, and donates them to various chapters of Heroes on the Water.